Jennifer, Rose, and Mary. This could be a story about three dolls. It could be. Song, did you remember about the milk? That's Miss Boswell, Aunt Minna. Young, attractive, a trifle earthbound. Yes, miss. Plenty milk for young person in refrigerator. And that's Song, not quite so earthbound. But then Song was born in Peking, in China, where people have been around long enough not to disbelieve, merely because they don't understand. But this didn't happen in China. It happened here in Sausalito, across the Golden Gate from San Francisco. Mm, well, it's a miracle we've gotten the place ready at all. Very healthy for house to be lived in again, especially with young person. Oh, Song, about the young person, about Anne. You understand she's had a terrible shock. Her mother. Yes. We'll have to help her try to forget it. We want to avoid reminding her of it unnecessarily. Then why picture? Hmm. I don't know. My brother especially asked that it be here. Oh, I don't mean that she should forget her mother or anything like that, but... Attitude. Very sympathetic, but intelligent. Exactly. Oh, they're here. Come on. Come on. I'm sorry. Song, will you help with the things? It's good to see you, Minna. Well, where is she? Anne? Anne, are you going to sit in there all day? It's incredible. Her eyes and her mouth is exactly Anne? like her... Anne, you remember your Aunt Minna? Aren't you going to say something? Well, of course she doesn't. She was just a baby. Cat got your tongue? She's just tired from the flight. Oh, Song. This is Song. He was with the other people who had the house. How do you do, Song? Well, Pa, come and take a look at your new home. Oh, Paul, one of the legs came off that blue wing chair, but apart from that, everything seems to have arrived all right. Well, how do you like it? Did you get the picture? Mm-hmm. I put it in the living room. Paul? <laughs> you know, there was just enough furniture for down here. But it looks quite good, don't you think? It'll be fine, Minna. You know, we haven't even had a chance to clean upstairs. Paul, I suppose you thought I was crazy when I wrote suggesting a place this size. But really, at the price, it is... It was a great buy. It was. It was an incredible buy. And, you know, you'd think that there was something wrong, but it's perfect, really. And there'll be plenty of room for all three of us down here. Do you like it? What does Miss think of new house? Who's up there? No one. Empty loans. No. They're not empty. And dear, come on, honey. There's so much else to see and I've got a surprise for you. They're not. Anne, do you hear your aunt? Why can't you ever do anything at once when you're first told? Oh, oh I know. I'm tired. Well, come on and let me show you what I have for you. Do you like them? Are they for me? Of course they are. I hope you don't think you're too old to play with dolls. 
all little girls should have dolls. It's very good for developing the maternal instinct. Come on, Anne. Help yourself to some lemonade. Song made it with fresh lemons from the garden. And your daddy and I are going to have a little pick-me-up, too. And then I'll show you the rest of the house. Paul? I fixed up your study just like you had it in Denver. You can fiddle around with it. Oh, bourbon and water? Yes. Anne! Anne, you did that deliberately! I oh, did, Jill! You did it oh, deliberately! Stop it, you hurt her! She did, I know her! Why should she? Because she hates her. She hates her! How could you say such a thing in front of that child? <laughs> Why did it have to be you? And we've got to be patient with your daddy, the both of us. You're the one to help him through this. Because he loves you. He doesn't love me. He only loves mommy. He wishes I was killed in the accident and not mommy. Don't you ever let me hear you say a thing like that again. It's just that he's hurt now. And when people are hurt, it's much harder for them to show their love. It'll take some time for him to get around to loving you again. No, he won't. He didn't before, and he won't ever. Oh, Anne, darling, you're just upset. I guess it's like you and Uncle Jeffrey. Sometimes I wish Daddy and I could get divorced. Hey. Miss like new house. Real cool, eh? Can I go up there? Honey, that's a dead part of the house. We're not using that now. But I want to see something. Then we go on tour of inspection. House quite old by some standards. Built in the 1890s. But has survived many decorators since. Last tenant used as one of many guest rooms. What happened to them, son? They decided the house was uncomfortable. That's ridiculous. Not intelligent people. This used as master bedroom. Yes? Ed? Someone called me. They called my name. knew this was here. Old nursery. It's filthy. Couldn't have been used by the last people. No, not used by people. Aunt Minna, hmm? can I have this for my room? Oh, now, Aunt. Please. You can't sleep up here all the way from everyone else. Yes, I could. I want to. Besides, it would cost a fortune to heat. And you'll see. When we get your room all fixed up downstairs. It's happier here. <laughs> More coffee, Miss Boswell? Yes, please, son. Aunt Minna, why did Daddy start to work right away? Oh, he needs to be kept busy now. Then tomorrow, will you wake me up real early before he goes? Yes, of course, darling. I'm supposed to kiss him goodbye. Everybody sleep well last night? After all the excitement yesterday? Beautifully. Perhaps somebody too excited to sleep. Hmm? Last night, coming home from movie, I see light burning upstairs in old nursery. Oh, you must have imagined it, Song. We were all in bed by nine. Or perhaps Song imagined. Mr. 
Miss, not like flowers? Sometimes. But they don't talk to you, eh? Maybe because Miss not listen. Voices of flowers not so easy to hear as other voices. Will you help me get the music box? Music box? Come on, I'll show you. In the top of my shell. Nothing up there, miss. Only suitcases and boxes. Yes, in back, way in back. Who put it there? Your thing should be in your room. Oh, it isn't mine. It's theirs, but they said I could have it. They? Jennifer, Rose, and Mary. Nothing here. Yes, way in the back. Thirty years lost. Thirty years since I've seen this music box. Thank you. Aunt Minna says it's the dead part of the house. Anything loved is not dead. It's nice having friends here. All right, we'll try it once again, though. I don't care what you say, many are gonna spoil that child. Oh, honestly, Paul, you spend one Saturday giving her a playroom, you'd think she'd ask for the moon. She'll be sick of it in a week. Could be. But in the meantime, you could at least act like you're interested in where yeah, she's going. Sure. Now there's nothing. It's probably why she's been sneaking up here all the time, rebelling because she knows you don't want her to have a playroom. That's nice, too. It's your own fault. The child's got to assert herself somehow. That's the screwiest darn thing I ever saw. Can't you find the blockage? There isn't any blockage. I put a whole new pipe through. The gas comes on in every room except this one. You sure the gas is turned on down at the main? I tried everything. Don't ask me why, but the gas just doesn't come on in here. You better get an electric heater or something. I've done all I can do. All right, thanks anyway. Just leave the bill downstairs. Hmm. Isn't that odd? I gotta waste 50 bucks on an electric heater just so she can get sick of it. <laughs> Boy. Will you stop it? Stop what? Honestly, Paul, you become a very selfish man. What do you want her to do? Hate you so you can pity yourself even more? Oh, don't start that. I want to tell you something. I don't pity you. I'm envy. At least you know what it's like to be loved. <sighs> oh, man, I... I don't know how to approach her. She embarrasses me. Oh, it looks beautiful. Thank you, Aunt Minna. Oh, don't thank me. Thank your daddy. He did it all. You know, we can't get that heater to work. I knew it wouldn't. How? They told me. Who? Jennifer, Rose, and Mary. Oh. Who are they? This is Jennifer, and that's Rose, and that's Mary. You mean they talk to you? I'm going to go fix some lunch.
call it. You did. Anne's waiting for you. Oh, please. It's no good, Minna. I can't stand it here either. You'll never be able to stand it anywhere. Until you learn to accept Janie's death, learn to live with it. Go home, Paul. Go back to Denver where you belong. It'll be so much easier for you there. Your friends are there. They'll be able to help you. Where Anne can feel a little security. I hate Denver. I hate everything that reminds me of her. What about your daughter? What about Anne? I suppose it'd be easier if you could run away from her, too. Maybe. Well, then why don't you go oh, on? Oh, come on, Minna. This is none of your business. You're gonna listen to me. That child sits upstairs in that room all day long with no one to talk to but a servant. Then an aunt she doesn't even know. Even those dolls have become more real to her than her own father. Well, I wish she were mine. I only wish she were mine. She told me to call her just as soon as I heard the car. So she could be downstairs to kiss you home. Anne? Oh, Daddy. What are you doing? It's a dance I learned called the Charleston. Oh, well, go on. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know you could Charleston. Well, you'll be a smash with that when school starts. I just learned today. Oh, your Aunt Minna? No, Jennifer Rose and Mary taught me. They say it's all the rage and when I get to go to dances. Honey. There's no need for you to make up stories. I think it's swell if your Aunt Minna teaches you. I'm not telling stories. Okay, have it your own way. It's true, Daddy. Jennifer Rose and Mary teach me everything. Come on. I won't! I won't go! I won't go to Denver! I won't! I won't! I won't ever leave them! Ever, 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 ever! Anne! All right. What chapter is this in How to Raise a Child? I tell her we're going home and look what happens. Oh, no, Paul, listen. No, I'm, I'm trying to act like a father at least. And look what I get. Now, I'm telling you this doll business is silly and it's going to stop right now. Oh, now, Paul, wait a minute. Perhaps the dolls have become too real to her, but after all, whose fault is that? Let me talk to her. Miss. Yes. Be most careful. Trust Miss will not try to interfere with Jennifer Rose and Mary. Ah, oh, listen, if I had my way, those dolls would have wound up in the trash can weeks ago. Important mistake. Jennifer Rose and Mary, not dolls. Oh, yeah. Then has got a name for it. Something to do with fantasy taking on reality. <laughs> no. This is fantasy made up by Miss Anne to hide truth. What? Nursery occupied by something other than dolls. What are you trying to say? Previous tenants moved because of this. Sounds of children weeping most pitifully in still hours of night. Song, are you trying to tell me that room is haunted? Yes. Very occupied. In most friendly possible way. Come on. During Roaring Twenties, owner of house, also father. Father of three little girls. And shamefully neglectful of same. Many times children left here in house alone. Alone one night sleeping in nursery. <coughs> and... in that room something touched me touched me then it tried to hug me oh. are you all right they didn't mean to scare what happened oh we can't stay in this house someone tell me what happened jennifer rose and mary they're not dolls they're not dolls so on 
Did you put that story into Anne's head? No. Miss Anne, tell me story. I listen. I've heard story many times. Same story. All right. So three children died up there from escaping gas 30 years ago, but she could have heard it from one of the neighbors. I've seen no neighbors. Did Miss Boswell teach Charleston dance to Miss Anne? Anne! All ready to go? Yes. Paul. Oh, come on, Minna. Oh, I know it's the 20th century, and I know it's impossible. But I also know something touched me. Listen, I've had enough of this nonsense. Anne, come on down here now, dear. We're going. Paul, you didn't let her go up there. Why not? There's nothing up there that can hurt her. No? Then why are you in such a hurry to get her out of the house? Oh, I'll tell you why. She's my child, and I don't want her head stuffed full of a lot of crazy ghost talk from both of you. We're going home now, and I'll drag her out of here by the ears if I have to. She's my child, and I want her with me because I love her. I love her. Daddy? Come on, dear. We're going now. No more arguments. I was just saying goodbye to Jennifer, Rose, and Mary. They said fathers are very nice people, and they thought I should go. I'm ready if you want me. I want you. I want you. Come on now. Get your coat. Come on. We're gonna miss the plane. Oh, that's right. Is everything all set, Song? All ready. Okay. Come on. Oh, Daddy, my music box. Oh. Well, I'll get it, darling. Song, take these things out of the car. story? The overactive imagination of a small child? What about Minna? She said something touched her. No, hugged her. An affectionate ghost. More imagination? Maybe. I guess the only thing that really matters is the difference it made in Anne's life with her father. How it happened is anybody's guess. And why? We'll leave that to your imagination. In a moment, I'll be back and tell you something about next week's venture into the world of the unknown. Mr. Pop. Eat. Yesterday, we weren't so alarmed. When he didn't come to the office this morning, well, then we concluded something must be wrong. He's here in the house. We'll find out in a minute, Benson. Yeah. It's dark in this hallway, Mr. Lamont. There must be a light switch here somewhere. Oh, yes, here it is. Ah, oh, there, that's better. He hasn't been sleeping here at this house for over a year. No, but they said at the club that he wasn't there yesterday. He hadn't slept in his room there last night. In that case, he may be here. That's what I'm afraid of. Maybe he had a stroke or something and wasn't able to get to a phone. We look upstairs first. Yes, I think we'd better. Oh, here's the stairway. It's queer, isn't it? If he came here in the evening, wouldn't he have left some lights on? That's what I was thinking. Uh. It's gloomy in this house. No wonder he shut it all up and went to live at the club after his wife died. Mr. Davidson has always been a peculiar man. I haven't been his attorney as long as I have without realizing that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what bedroom is his? Yes, I think this one. At least we'll try this room first. Uh, is it locked? No, well, it just seems to stick. Must be the door is swell. Let me try it, Mr. Lamont. Oh, I'm getting it now. Here it comes. Gee, where's? What's the matter, Benson? I don't know, but when you opened the door, it was as if something grabbed a hold of my hand. What? Well, I know it sounds queer, but it was if an icicle touched well, it's me. It's just the cold air rushing out of this room. 
It's as black as night in here. Curtains and drapes are heavily drawn. Now, if I can find a light in here. Oh, here it is, Mr. Lamont. Uh, not in here. No, not here. Maybe this isn't his room. Well, if he's going to stay in the house, he'd sleep in here. This room hasn't been touched for a long time, has it? Well, I guess not. Mr. Lamont, isn't it queer that this room should be so cold? Well, no, there's nothing strange about that. A room that's all closed up gets damp and cold. I have a feeling that it's going to start snowing in here any minute. This cold air oh, seems to freeze your very blood. Mr. Benson, I, I don't think your employer stayed in this house night before last. I don't think anyone's been in this house for a long time. Well, then, where is he? I don't know. We look in the other rooms up here. Uh, Turn off his light. Uh, shall we close the door? Yes, leave everything just as we found it. If he finds out that we've been snooping around up here, he may not like it. He's very peculiar. I know, but certainly he'd want us to hunt for him if he thought we were worried. If we thought he was lying up here, dead. He doesn't like people prying into his affairs. Uh, that's true. Yeah, we're looking this upstairs library. If he's not in there, well then, means he's not here in the house. Yes. So... Huh? What was that? Sounded like a moan. Uh, yes, it did. Uh, uh, Mr. Davison, uh, where are you? Uh, Mr. Davison? Mr. Davison, where are you? Not here in the library. No, it sounded as if it came from downstairs. Yes, I guess it did. Hurry, let's get down there. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Davison, uh, where are you? He's not here in the living room. No, but we heard a moan from somewhere. Sounded like it. Mr. Lamont, look. Look, do you see... See what I'm pointing at? Where? That book on the table. It moved. It, it moved all by itself. What? It did. I saw it. I, I saw it. It moved from one side of the table to the other. Nonsense. That's impossible. My eyes aren't playing me tricks that badly. I saw it move. Come over here. Look. Uh, you see where it's been lying? Imprint in the dust. Yes. Now it's over here. Oh, wait a minute. This is getting a little too deep for me. Oh. Benson, what's the matter now? I felt that touch on my hand again. I did. Hey, there is something queer going on in here. Look. Look over there at the window. You see that? Yes. Yeah. It's like someone was touching those drapes and making them move. Yes. Mr. Lamont, let's get out of here. Let's get out. Hurry. Right. They couldn't see me. They couldn't hear my voice. Isn't there anyone who can hear me speak? Oh, if you know how badly I needed help, how hard I tried to make them hear me. You people who are of the world and know it. You who can step to the mirror, look in it, and see your face and body reflected there. Oh, how thankful you should be. Just a few moments ago, I managed to propel myself to the mirror in the hall. I looked into it. I stood directly in front of it. There was nothing there. I have no face, no body, no arms, no hands. And yet, and yet a sound came from whatever it is that I am, like a moan. My lawyer, Mr. Lamont, and my bookie, Mr. Benson, came rushing down the stairs. I could see them, but great heaven, they couldn't see me. I called out, help me, help me. But they went out the door, slammed it shut, left me here alone. Oh, doomed to what? Isn't there anyone who can tell me what's happened to me? Two days ago, yes, I can still reckon days, I left the office and went to the club. It was about an hour before dinner. I sat reading the paper. Suddenly all the letters began to jump and dance before my eyes. And I distinctly heard something whispering in my ears. Go to your house. Go to your house. I threw down the paper. No one seemed to be watching me. I was so frightened I felt I must be ill. But I couldn't tell anyone in the club. There was a buzzing in my ears. And I could hear that voice saying, Go to your house. Go to your house. I walked out the door down the street. 
Some power seemed to be forcing me to go. I walked fast. I approached my house. I haven't lived in it since my wife died. I looked up at it. It seemed to be weaving back and forth. Black clouds hung over it. I walked up the steps. I reached the outside door. Mechanically, I took the key from my pocket, inserted it in the lock, opened the door. I stood inside. Now, why was I here? Why had I come to the house? I didn't know. I walked into the living room. Suddenly, I felt a great rush of cold wind. It engulfed me, whirled round me, seemed to be wrapping itself about me. Help! Help! What is it? Help! Help! My body is freezing. My blood has turned to ice. Help! 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 I can't move! I can't seemed to be bathed in a purple twilight. It was then that I realized that I no longer had a physical body. I seemed to see everything in the room but myself. Look down at your hand and arm. Realize what it would mean to have the feeling of it, but not be able to see it. Can you imagine such torture? I can make things move, but I can't see the hand that moves them. Oh... Horrible, terrible calamity that has befallen me. How long am I going to go on like this? What sort of a world am I living in? In the purple shadows between this and the next? Someone have mercy on me. Help me. Great heaven, someone help me. Mr. Benson. Yes, Mr. Lamont. Before we go into the next room to talk to Mr. Davidson's niece, I... I think there are a few things we should settle between us. Yes, sir. Yesterday ended a year since the disappearance of Mr. Davidson. There's no doubt about it. He's dead. He must be, sir. He was kidnapped, which I'm inclined to think happened. Kidnappers must have gotten frightened and killed him. There were no ransom notes received? No, because they became frightened after they killed him. But his body... Don't know what they did with it. It's possible that though we dragged the river, it's still there. We've gone all over that before. That isn't what I want to talk to you about. It's... It's his house. Yes. Police have been through it dozens of times since the day last year when you and I went through it. I know they have. If they saw or heard anything peculiar, they failed to mention it. As far as you and I are concerned. I have never mentioned what happened to a soul. Yeah, nor I. It's been so long now, I... I wonder if it could have been true... I often think the same thing. According to Mr. Davison's will, the house and part of his estate is to be deeded to his niece, Loretta Hathaway. She and her husband are in the next room. I think it best, Mr. Benson, that we never tell her what occurred to us that day. I agree. She and her husband are not wealthy. Money in the house would be very welcome to them. We shouldn't spoil it for them. No. All right. We'll go inside now and read the will to them. Mr. Hathaway will take over Mr. Davison's business. Think you find him a nice man to work for. Come. Let's go inside. Yes. Dan, you think you're going to like it here in this house? It almost seems to be too grand for us. I know it. Weren't you surprised to find out that Uncle Jim had willed us so much? Business, half his money, and this house? Well, rather. But then, of course, there was no one else for him to leave it to. I know. Dan, have you ever thought he might have committed suicide? No. I never thought that. Mother said he wasn't always as peculiar as he was during his last years. What do you mean? Well, I remember her saying that it was after he built this house and he and Aunt Mary moved into it that he began to change. You know, there's something about this place that would make anybody change. Now, what do you mean? What I mean, Loretta, is that why it's so blame cold in here. The house has been shut up for over three years, Dan. I know, but it's warm outside. This house is like an icebox, and we've had the windows open all day. It'll get thawed out in a few days. Mm, I hope so. I suppose we better retire. You take charge of the office tomorrow, don't you? Yes. Poor Uncle Jim. 
I still keep thinking that he may have committed suicide. I've often wondered if they went through his desk and things to see if he left any notes. Oh, yes, they've gone through his things dozens of times. Dan. Yes? It was three years ago that Aunt Mary died, wasn't it? Oh, about that. She took an overdose of sleeping powder by mistake. Then six months after that, Mother died. Then Uncle Jim disappeared. A lot of tragedy in one family in a few years, isn't it? I wouldn't dwell on that, Loretta. What are you doing? I just thought I'd go through this desk to see if I could find anything that no one else has discovered. I wouldn't look through those things tonight. Let's go upstairs. I will in a minute. Dan. Dan, come here. What is it? Look at this. Look at this writing. Well, what is it? That's what I'm asking you. Just purple marks on a piece of paper. I know, but what peculiar marks. Like they were made with a fingernail and written in some foreign language. What do you suppose it is? I haven't any idea. It's probably been there for ages. If it had any significance, the police would have used it. I know, but it's lying right here on top of all these papers. As if it had been dropped here just recently. Dan, feel of that paper. It's ice cold. Yes, it's like everything else in this house. Oh, come on. You can rummage through that desk tomorrow. I'm going upstairs. Do you realize it's nearly midnight? Dan! Dan! Heaven's sakes, what is it? Look. Look. See that window blind? Look at it. Why, why, it's moving. Yes. Look. Look at it. It's moving up and down all by itself. Oh, oh I, I see what it is, Loretta. There's something the matter with the roller. You've seen that happen to window curtains before. They fly way up to the top or way down to the bottom of the window when the roller's broken. But, Dan, it, it was just as if some unseen hand moved that window curtain. That's what it was like. Some unseen hand moved that curtain. <laughs> Midnight in the house. Loretta and Dan are sleeping, but not... Well, listen. (laughs) No. I am not sleeping. I never sleep. You know that I've been wandering in this, my house, for over a year. Living in hideous torture. Oh, I've tried to make someone understand... But it's useless. They only grow frightened, as Loretta did earlier this evening. But she didn't get frightened enough, no. I'll tell you why. What I've discovered in these long, endless hours that I've spent here. There's something strange about this place. Something horrible. You hear the wind? It's beginning again. About midnight every night, it springs up. There's a queer purple glow over everything. And the cold sears me all through again, penetrating to my very marrow. I know. I have no form that you can see, or I can see. But I can feel pain just the same. Such pain as you never dreamed of in your normal world. Red and Dan will suffer the same transformation as I have if they don't get out of this house. I've been convinced for a long time now that it must have been true that my wife Mary realized there was something wrong in this house. That's why she took the sleeping powders that night. She took her own life through fear. But why didn't she warn me so that I could die? For as it is now... I may go on suffering like this for ages and centuries. There may be thousands of houses all over the world that are under a spell like this one is. There must be other people living in this strange world like I am. Here it comes again. This wind that lives in this world of purple shadows. I've got to warn Loretta and Dan. I've got to get them out of the house. I must propel myself up the stairs and open the door to their room. I'm climbing the stairs now. I can see in the night. I can see everything but myself. I think my hand is touching the banister. Now, I'm at the top of the stairs. I must open the door to the room. Oh, that wind. 
It's making me suffer such pain. I must warn them. in this room. And where's the wind coming from? Loretta, get out. Get out of this house. It's going to be too late. There is a strange light in here. Turn up the night lamp. It doesn't seem to make any difference. The light is getting stronger and stronger. And the wind is freezing me, freezing my blood. Loretta, I feel it too. Let's get out of this room. Help. I can't move. I can't move. Loretta, I can't move either. I, I'm powerless. Help. Someone help us. Help. I can feel my whole body changing. Loretta, what's happening to us? Dan, help me. I, I reached out for you and knocked over the lamp. Loretta, I can't see my hand anymore. I can't see my arms or my legs. Look. Standing in this room. It, it, it's Uncle Jim. Jim Davison. Yes. You see me now. For your change, the same as I am. What's happened to us? We've entered a strange world. It's this house. It's under some horrible spell. I've been in these shadows since the day I disappeared. Uncle Jim, is there nothing we can do? Nothing? There's our only hope, see? You knocked over that lamp, Dan. This room will soon be all afire. Yes. Let it burn. It may burn down the house and give us the freedom of death. It's our only hope, our only salvation. Death, give us freedom. Let us get out of this torture. Have mercy. Save us. Have mercy. What's the news, Mr. Lamont? Did they find the bodies? They've gone through the charred wreck of that house for hours. There's no trace of a body there. Well, you think they got out before the house burned? Then where are they? Benson, I don't think they got out. But they didn't find their bodies, Mr. Lamont. They didn't find them. But no one will ever hear of them again. What do you mean? It's difficult to explain to anyone but you... Because you and I know there was something strange about that place. Yes. I was with the firemen when we went through the wreckage. It was their bedroom. There was nothing there. But Benson, as we were going through it, smoke, of course, was smoldering there. But a huge purple flame sprung up and seemed to lose itself in the atmosphere. It startled me. I stepped back. Firemen thought I'd found something. Of course, I, I couldn't explain to them... I don't know that I can explain to you. But it was as if... Well... As if something registered in my mind. And a voice said to me... You will never find their bodies. They're gone. Gone forever. Liberated forever. They're free. 
No longer tortured. <laughs> I'll be back. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> All characters, places, and occurrences mentioned in the Hermit's Cave are fictitious, and similarity to persons, places, or occurrences is purely accidental. up at the end of the road that nobody goes near well let me tell you why they don't well in the haunted house at the top of the hill the spooks give around to test their skill that stroke of 12 that very night seemed to such a frightful sight stay stay away when the ghosts and the goblins play when the hands of the clocks fall out midnight better get in out of sight The ghosts and the witches and the devil too are in there mixing up a brew And if a man should venture near, his soul inside would disappear Your soul and mine is in their brew, the fate of a witch we have no clue All we do is hope and pray, we'll be here another day Stay, stay away when the ghosts and the goblins play When the hands of the clocks fall out at midnight Better get in out of sight oh, Well, a footloose life if I did leave My soul is a filled with selfish greed Thus my soul has I found this plight The devil's judging yours tonight Oh, brother, hit me when I say you to better live right every day Cause someday it will be your turn And if you wrong your soul will burn show you the only really haunted house in the world. Since it was built a century ago, seven people, including my brother, have been murdered in it. Since then, I've owned the house. I've only spent one night there, and when they found me in the morning, I, I was almost dead. Frederick Lauren, and I've rented the house on Haunted Hill tonight so that my wife can give a party, a haunted house party. <laughs> She's so amusing. There'll be food and drink and ghosts, and perhaps even a few murders. You're all invited. If any of you will spend the next 12 hours in this house, I'll give you each $10,000, or your next of kin in case you don't survive. Ah, but here come our other guests. It was my wife's idea to have our guests come in funeral cars. She's so amusing. Her sense of humor is, shall we say, original. I dreamed up the hearse. It's empty now, but after a night in the house on Haunted Hill, who knows? This is Lance Schroeder, a test pilot. So no doubt a brave man. But don't you think you can be much braver if you're paid for it? And I happen to know that Lance needs the 10,000 I'll give him, if he's brave enough to stay all night. This is Ruth Bridges. You've no doubt read her column in the newspapers. 
She says her reason for coming to the party is to write a feature article on ghosts. She's also desperate for money. Gambles. You've already met Watson Pritchard, a man living in mortal fear of a house, and yet he is risking his life to spend another night here. I wonder why. He says for money. This is Dr. David Trent, a psychiatrist. He claims that my ghost will help his work on hysteria. But don't you see a little touch of greed there around the mouth and eyes? This is Nora Manning. I picked her from the thousands of people who work for me because she needed the 10,000 more than most. Supports her whole family. Isn't she pretty? The party's starting now. And you have until midnight to find the house on Haunted Hill. Only the ghosts in this house are glad we're here. Are we all strangers to each other? Don't you two know each other? I'm afraid I don't even know your name. I'm Nora Manning. Lance Schroeder. Is Frederick Lauren a friend of yours? I've heard of him, but I've never met him. I work for one of his companies, but I've never seen him. I've never met the man either. Just a phone call. Do you know him? No. Well, then you're the only one of us who does. I don't know him. All the details about running the house were done by mail. He's quite wealthy, isn't he? Millions. And uh, five wives, I believe. Four, I think, so far. A $50,000 party for only five people is a little steep, even for a millionaire. <laughs> well, if I were going to haunt anybody, this would certainly be the house I'd do it in. Who closed the door? The 
thing's made of solid steel. here and fortunately still alive. Is your face on yet? Dust and dirt everywhere and the water barely trickles. Couldn't you have had the place cleaned? Atmosphere, darling. You know how ghosts are. They never tidy up. And that's a very fetching outfit but hardly suitable for a party. I'm not going to the party. Mm, this spend the night ghost party was your idea, remember? Since it's going to cost me $50,000, I want you to have fun. The party was my idea until you invited all the guests. Why all these strangers? Why none of our friends? Friends? Do we have any friends? No, your jealousy took care of that. I had a reason for inviting each guest. I wanted kind of a cross-section. From psychiatrist to typist, and from drunk to jet pilot. They share one thing. They all need money. Now let's see if they're brave enough to earn it. And you call this a party? Could be. Why do you always do that? It spoils the champagne. It might explode. Never does. Would you guarantee that? That isn't funny, Frederick. Make a good headline. Playboy kills wife with champagne cork. Will you join me? No, thank you. Just a sip might improve your humor. My humor is fine, thanks. And I haven't poisoned it. It's always good to know that. Have some. You'll enjoy the party more. Go on. Your trust is so touching. And I'm not going to the party. Of all my wives, you're the least agreeable. But still alive. Hmm. Would you go away for a million dollars, tax-free? You want it all, don't you? I deserve it all. Your jealousy isn't tax-free. And your possessiveness is maddening. If ever a man had grounds for divorce. But can't prove them. The time will come. You'll slip up one of these days. Think so? If I live long enough. You remember the fun we had when you poisoned me? <laughs> Something you ate, the doctor said. Yes. Arsenic on the rocks. Annabelle. You'd do it again if you thought you could get away with it, wouldn't you? Darling, what makes you think that? Something about you. that hanging is very uncomfortable in case you get any more ideas. Now don't let the ghosts and the ghouls disturb you, darling. Darling, the only ghoul in the house is you. And don't sit up all night thinking of ways to get rid of me. It makes wrinkles. she used on my brother and her sister. Hacked them to pieces. We found parts of the bodies all over the house. In places you wouldn't think. The funny thing is the heads have never been found. Hands and feet and things like that. But no heads. The wife, probably in a rage, threatened her husband with a knife and then, carried away by hysteria, took a swing at him and simply went on from there. Well, she certainly went on. How many people did she kill, Mr. Pritchard? Only two. Her husband and her sister. No one else was here. So there are two loose heads just floating around in here somewhere? You can hear them at night. They whisper to each other and then cry. <laughs> Since our host isn't here, would anyone care to mix me a drink? Certainly. What will you have? 
Good evening. I'm your host, Frederick Lauren. Since we're all strangers to each other, let's get acquainted with a drink, shall we? Mr. Lauren, I advise you to call this party off now. The ghosts are already moving, and that's a bad sign. Let me apologize for my wife. She'll join us later. What do you have? Scotch and. Doctor? I'll have the same. Now, before the party begins, let's go over the details. The caretakers will leave at midnight, locking us in here until they come back in the morning. Once the door is locked, there's no way out. The windows have bars that a jail would be proud of, and the only door to the outside locks like a vault. There's no electricity, no phone, no one within miles, so no way to call for help. Like a coffin. So if any of you decide not to stay for the party, you must let me know before midnight. Of course, if you leave, I shan't be able to pay you anything. I'm interested in your reasons for this uh, party. Aside from the pleasant company. Ghosts, Doctor. I think everyone wonders what they would do if they saw a ghost. And now my wife has given us all the opportunity to find out. Hmm. Amusing. Ghosts, etc., being only creations of hysteria, your party should be a success. Well, Pritchard here promises us genuine ghosts. Seven now. Maybe more before morning. That's cheerful. Four men have been murdered in this house. And three women. You planned your party very well, Mr. Lauren. Four of us are men, three are women. Well, it goes for everybody. Hmm. Well, Pritchard, why don't you take us on a tour through the house and let's see what happens, huh? See that stain? Blood. A young girl was killed here. And whatever got her wasn't human. Don't stand there. What do you mean? Where? It's too late. They've marked you. Ridiculous. The roof probably leaks. Oh, that must be what it is. Who would want to haunt me? I would say any self-respecting male ghost. I hope it doesn't come back. Well, Mr. Pritchard, you're the life of the party. He hasn't even started yet. Wasn't there a man who threw his wife into a wine vat or something? That was in the cellar. There's been a murder almost every place in this house. Who didn't die here, he was electrocuted later. Mr. Norton did a good deal of experimenting with wines. But his wife didn't think it was any good. So he filled the vat with acid and threw her in. She was supposed to stay down. But the bones came up. It's a funny thing. None of the murders here were just ordinary. Just shooting or stabbing. They've all been sort of wild, violent, and different. Look out! God, she didn't fall in. You mean there's still acid in there? everything with hair and flesh. It just leaves the bones. My, it's dry and dusty down here. Well, there's a 
a cure for that upstairs. <laughs> Come on. You get invited to this party. No. no. Go on. I mean, what did he tell you? Mr. Lawrence said everybody would get $10,000. But he didn't say anything about being locked in. No. Uh, he just made a deal with me on the phone, but nothing about having to stay. Aren't you going to stay? If I don't, I lose $10,000. I'm going to stay, too. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah. You believe in ghosts? I don't know. Well, I agree with what that doc says. You can spook yourself. I've done it in planes. Seen things that weren't really there. Or were they? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with your ten thousand? If we get it. What do you mean, if we get it? Won't he pay us if we stay? Ah, sure he will. Ten thousand is no more to him than a nickel is to us. We were in an automobile accident. Now I'm the only one in the family who can make any money. Boy, I've never seen so many doors. Closet? Does it go anywhere? Money won't cure. I must, I must have bumped my head. And the only way you could bump your head in here is to run head on into the wall. You didn't do that, did you? Let's get a bandage on that. I wonder why they didn't kill him. He didn't bump his head. They hit him. They? Nora, when you came in, you said something about a ghost. There was something. What did it look like? Well, it, it was wearing a black thing that went all the way to the floor. Weren't you a little frightened at the time? 
Well, yes. That, Mr. Lauren, is hysteria. But then, Doctor, how do you explain what happened to Lance? Was that hysteria, too? You better get that checked in a day or so. Thanks, Doc. Wait for me in the hall. The ghosts are coming closer, Mr. Lauren. You really believe in your pet ghost, don't you, Pritchett? Before the night's over, you will, too. Wouldn't you like a drink, Lance? Uh, no, thanks. I'd like one. Scotch and. Mr. Lauren, are you really going to pay anyone who stays all night? Certainly. $10,000. Will there be much red tape or delay? In a hurry, dear? <laughs> Frankly, yes. Or frantically. There you are, my dear. or something was in here when I came in. But where? And if the door was locked, how did it get out? What you saw might have been a ghost, Nora, but what was in here with me was no ghost. I don't know. I was so scared. Does that sound different to you? Yes. Three, six, nine, twelve. Twelve feet. Three, six. Now, I'm going to knock on the other wall. When you hear me, you knock on this wall. Tap lower down. run it just floats yeah but uh, why didn't i see it you don't believe me <laughs> can i I'm Annabelle Lauren. You must be Miss Manning. I realize this is a very unusual and I'm afraid very dull party. Wouldn't you like to freshen up? This is your room. Depressing, isn't it? I doubt if I'll spend much time here. It's going to rain. Perfect atmosphere for my husband's party. Why did you come here? He said he'd give me $10,000. Why did he pick you? I don't know. My supervisor just came and said I'd been invited. How long have you known my husband? I just met him tonight. So? 
Why you? What were you doing wandering around by yourself? Well, I was in the cellar with Lance, Mr. Schroeder, and I just left, that's all. Don't do it again. Don't go anywhere in this house by yourself. Now, fix your face, and I'll come by for you in a few minutes. But I... You're in danger. We all are. But who? I hope for your sake you never find out. I'm Annabelle Lauren. Were you looking for something? Uh, not exactly. Are you the doctor? No. No, I'm Lance Schroeder. The pilot. You've hurt yourself. Oh, it's uh, just a bump on the head. Which is my room? I believe this is it. Thank you, Mrs. Lauren. Annabelle Lance. You were with the young girl in the cellar. Why was she so upset? Was she? And you don't look like the type to go around bumping his head. What really happened, Lance? Well, Nora thought she saw a ghost, but uh, I didn't see anything. She was just frightened then. And mad at me, I think. I kidded her about it. I wouldn't joke about anything else that happens here tonight. Now, don't tell me you're taking all this seriously. Aren't you? Well, I'd uh, like to find out what hit me. Lance, if I need help, may I count on you? <laughs> sure, I guess so. Look, what's going on here, anyway? I mean, what is with this party bit? This is no party. He's planning something. Your husband? I wish I knew what it was. Must be pretty big if he's going to lay out 50,000. The money doesn't mean anything. He has a reason for getting us all up here to this dreadful old house. Well, what for? He doesn't even know us. Maybe that's exactly why you're here. Well, what can he get away with? Oh, he thinks that big money like his can get away with anything. You know, of course, that I'm his fourth wife. The first simply disappeared. The other two died. Lance, I don't want to join them. You mean he, uh... Oh, his doctor said they died of heart attacks. Two girls in their 20s. Well, what can he do? My husband is sometimes insane with jealousy. Nothing matters to him then. Please be careful. Would he hurt you? He would kill me if he could. all the fun. Nora Manning was almost killed by a falling chandelier. The pilot bashed his head in. Is he badly hurt? The Saturnine psychiatrist bandaged him up. Don't you want to go and console him, as you do most men, in your fashion? You're so clever, Frederick. Yes, I lie awake nights wondering why I married you. It was rather a mistake. You didn't marry me, dear. I married you. Unpleasant, but no mistake. Hurry up. Frederick, for the last time, I'm not going to your party. And for the last time, it's not my party, but yours. And you are going. I am not. Are you ready, dear? No. Are you ready, dear? Yes, damn you. Would you adore me as much if I were poor? <laughs> no. All you want to be is a lovely widow. It's almost time to lock up the house. And then your party will really begin. I wonder how it'll end. It's close to 
after midnight, Lance. Okay. I'll be down in a minute. Who is it? Your host, my dear. It's almost midnight, Nora. We're all going to get together down in the living room. All right, Mr. Lloyd. I'll be right down. Slides and his wife. They've been caretakers here for years. She's blind, you know. I'm not going to stay here. Well, Doctor, it looks like we have a real case of hysteria on our hands. I think she's just a little upset, not hysterical. Good evening. My wife. These are our guests. Ruth Bridges, Dr. Trent. You know Watson Pritchard, of course. Nora Manning. And uh, this is Lance Schroeder. Get me out of here. Now, what about the 10,000? I don't care. He wants to kill me. Who wants to kill you? Mr. Lawrence. May I have your attention, please? I think you all remember the bargain we made about staying all night. $10,000 apiece. If any of you don't survive, $50,000 will be divided amongst the rest of you. If I should die, you will be paid by my estate. When the door is locked from the outside by the caretakers, we'll all be forced to stay in this house until morning. If any of you decide not to stay, you must leave with the caretakers now. You won't have a chance to change your minds later, because there'll be no way to get out. I don't want to stay. Wait. Yet, who told them they could leave? They never leave before midnight. Well, they've gone now. I was going to ask you whether you wanted to stay or not, but it seems that the caretakers have made the decision for you. We're all locked in now. But I don't want to stay. Well, I'm sorry, my dear, but it's too late now. Darling, haven't you had enough of the silly game? Get some cars up here for these people and let them go home. But pay them first. This is your party, remember? In spite of my wife's faith in my ability to do the impossible, we will all have to stay in this house until 8 o'clock in the morning. But we have some party favors for you in these little coffins. This is 
my wife's idea. I must say, I think it's rather dangerous. I suppose you all know how to use one of these things, but in case you don't, you just press down on this lever with your thumb and then pull the trigger. You see, they're loaded. These are no good against the dead, only the living. Doctor? Lance? Nora? Go ahead, take it. Miss Bridges? And here's yours, dear. I don't need it. It was your idea. Who knows, you may want to use it on me before this night is over. Throw these guns away. They won't do you any good. I agree with Pritchard on that point, although not for the same reason. Dr. Trent, don't you approve of our little party favors? Suppose Nora had had a gun when she mistook the blind woman for a ghost. I don't think anyone else is going to walk around in total darkness. Oh, I'm sure we're not going to go running around the house shooting each other, aren't you? Who knows? Fear makes people do amazing things. Mr. Pritchard, you said your sister-in-law killed a man and a woman here and cut them up? You said they found hands and feet, but they never found any heads. Would you like to see one of those heads? Would you all like to see one of those heads? Well, then. Just follow me. Darling, I really don't need this. my suitcase. Just go look. But it was in there. A woman's head. Nora, I think you're a little upset. Would you care for a sedative? Get out! You think it's all right to leave her by herself, Doctor? I wish she'd taken the sedative. Well, what do you suppose she thought she saw? They're closing in on her. Look, Doc, I think somebody ought to stay with her. There could be a million people around her. But if they wanted her, they'd get her. What if he's right? Oh, he's too drunk to know what he's talking about. I wonder. I'll join you in a minute. Do you think it would do any good if you went in and talked to her? Well, do you think there really was a head in her suitcase? I don't know. A thing like that would put me right over the edge. Look, would you sort of stay up here, I mean, in case she needs help? All right. I'll be in my room. Just call if you want. Thanks. Are you sure there are only seven people in this house? Positive, except for the ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts, nor in frightening women. In Nora's case, it's gone far enough, perhaps too far. What do you suggest we do about it, Doctor? Don't frighten her anymore.
What do you know about this? They've taken her. In a little while, she'll be one of them. Where's Nor? Where is she? It's too late. It's too late. You'll never find her again. Pritchard, if you know where she is, you better tell me now. She's gone. She's gone with them. And there's nothing you can do about it. She's dead, Mr. Lauren. Your wife hanged herself. Suicide. this? I don't know. It, it was dark, but it must have been him. Has anybody seen you since he left you? I heard some people in that room, but I went by and nobody saw me. Mrs. Lauren is dead. But how? Lauren said she committed suicide, but I think somebody killed her. Him? I'm sure you've come to the same conclusion I have. Yeah, I think so. Well, let's all have a meeting, discuss what to do. The living room? Okay, in a minute. I've got to go downstairs. Now, you lock yourself in here and don't let anybody know you're here. If he thinks you're dead, he won't come here. And I'll get back as soon as I can. You'll be all right. And if you have to, you use it.
so beautiful, so greedy, so cold. What are you doing in here? Wait. Don't wait. What do you mean, coming in here? I didn't want them to take her away. You're drunk. They will if you don't watch her. You're drunk. All right, out with it, Bridget. Why did you come into this room? I'm the only one who understands. Understands what? Your wife isn't there anymore. She's already joined them. Look, Bridget, I've had enough of your spook talk. Get out, you sot, and don't come back into this room again. What's her name? Nora. I didn't disturb her since I don't think this concerns her. No, you're right. Mr. Lauren, isn't there some way we can get out of this house now? No, none at all. We could try breaking out. The only door to the outside is made of steel. The bars of the windows are set in solid stone. We've got to stay. I'm not afraid of your ghosts, Bridget. But I am afraid. When we came here a few hours ago, the only thing we had in common was the $10,000 we'd get. Now, however, we share something else. The death of Mrs. Lauren. So far tonight, one of us was almost killed by a falling chandelier. One of us was mysteriously slugged. One of us has been driven to the brink of absolute hysteria. And one of us is dead. Were these accidents? Suicide? And we must stay here for six more hours. Six hours? Six of us. Time enough. Who will be next? How will it happen? Let me ask you a question, Doctor. You were the first one to see my wife there. Did you also see anything that she could have climbed up on and then jumped? No. Did any of them? There was nothing. How then did she get up there so high? Exactly, Mr. Lauren, how? She couldn't have pulled herself up there. She couldn't have dropped from the ceiling. Do you think your wife killed herself? No. She was murdered by one of you. Or you, Mr. Lauren. To deliberately kill someone, you must have a reason. We were all strangers to your wife. Only you had a motive for murder. What husband hasn't at some time wanted to kill his wife? What husband hasn't had a thousand opportunities to do it in such a way so that he'd never be suspected? I'm not such a fool as to hang my wife from a ceiling by a rope. The fact remains that you, or one of us, murdered Mrs. Lauren. And that's a matter for the police. So how do we get the police? That's my point. We can't until morning. What began as a silly party given by an eccentric has now involved us all in murder. For once, Pritchard may be right. If another murder's in the works, let's stop it now. Another murder? Why not? Maybe one of us saw too much. Why should even a millionaire want to give each of us $10,000 to spend one night in a gloomy old house? To see some ghosts have a party? No. Have you finished trying me, Doctor? And is the verdict guilty of murder? Oh, this isn't getting us anywhere. Somebody killed Mrs. Lauren, we know that. One of us is guilty and the rest of us are innocent, okay. Now what we have to do for the next six hours is protect ourselves from each other. Do you really think? I don't think anything. I just know that I'm going to my room. And if anybody comes in, I'll shoot him. Or her. And if we all stay in our rooms, we'll be safe. Because the innocent will have no reason to leave his room. And the guilty will admit his guilt if he or she does. And we all have guns. And we're all agreed. 
Oh, I wish this night were over. Brooms? Guns? I tell you, it doesn't make any difference. They aren't through with us yet. What's the use of saying good night? In. Lance, I've been thinking. It was so dark down there. Maybe it wasn't Mr. Lawrence. It was him, all right. He tried to kill you, and he did kill his wife. How can you be so sure? She tried to warn me, ask me to help her. The doc thinks he's going to try and kill one of us. Now, there must be a way out of this place, and I'm going to find it and get the police before he does. I'm going with you. What if he finds out you're alive? No, Nora. You're safer here than any place else. Now just lock yourself in and keep quiet. If I find a way out, I'll come back and get you.
an admission of guilt, Doctor? Certainly not. There's either somebody else in this house or one of us has left his room. Did you hear anything? Organ music? That. And someone walking. You got yours? Ready? You look downstairs and I'll look up here. Why not together? There may be only minutes, seconds left of someone's life. Why waste time? over, darling. Every detail was perfect. What's happening? We've done it. A perfect crime. Beautiful. Has she killed him? Not yet. But she will. Get me out of this hanging harness. What's taking that girl so long? What time is it? At first, I couldn't get Nora to want to protect herself with a gun. But after you appeared at the window, everything began to work just as we had planned. You were wonderful. Just the touch that finally drove her into complete hysteria. It'll be worth all of our planning, darling. Where's Nora now? What's happening? On her way to the cellar. So scared, she'll shoot the first thing that moves. And Frederick? On his way to the cellar, too. David, are you sure none of them will suspect us? Of what? An hysterical girl accidentally shoots somebody? Who would suspect that we planned it that way, that we drove her to it? What about my suicide? We're just a ghost party gag. We'll claim it was a dummy, since I'm the only one who touched you. And the caretakers? Well, they had no idea what they were really doing. What about Nora? She's not stupid, you know. Darling, believe me, everything we've planned is working perfectly. Nora is sure Frederick murdered you. She thinks Frederick attacked her in the cellar, not me. And now Nora's almost out of her mind with fear. The heads, the music, you're hanging. I tell you, when Frederick walks in there, she'll shoot him. It's taking too long. David, you ought to be there. When you hear the shot, come down to the cellar.
David? David? or not. It's a pity you didn't know when you started your game of murder that I was playing too. There must be some way to get in here. Well, it's right along here, somewhat. Lance! I've shot Mr. Law and he's down in the wine cellar. Alive? I don't think so. He's alive. You didn't shoot anyone, my dear. I loaded your gun with blanks. I can tell you all now. Trent and my wife were planning to kill me. They failed. Trent tried to throw me in the vat. My wife stumbled and fell. I'm ready for justice to decide if I'm... Innocent or guilty. Now there are nine. 
There'll be more, many more. They're coming for me now. And then they'll come for you. Thank <laughs> you.